Frozen in the ice sheets of the planet's extreme latitudes, the alpine and continental glaciers, and the permafrost of cold climates, ice covers 10% of the surface of the Earth. These ice sheets, icebergs, and glaciers are continually changing, growing and shrinking, moving and breaking apart. The constant transformation and flux of water across the surface of the Earth has been responsible for tremendous geophysical effects, and ice is an integral part of the Earth's present environment. The frozen domains are also home to thousands of varieties of microbes, including resilient microalgae that can live off of the scarce resources around them. Due to the rapidly changing climate and conditions in many regions with permanent ice cover, these algae are multiplying faster than ever before and painting the ice on which they live shades of pink and red, a phenomenon referred to as glacier blood. The more and more frequent occurrence of glacier blood may be an indicator of pollution and helps accelerate the melting of ice and snowpack, in turn warming the region and altering ecosystems downstream of the glaciers. Few regions have seen the growing effects of glacier blood as pronouncedly as the Alps, where the pristine white snow accumulated over winter has consistently turned bright red and pink as temperatures rise in the spring and life breaks out of dormancy. This phenomenon is due to the pigments produced by microalgae, specifically carotenoids, the same class of pigment that gives vegetables, such as carrots and squash, their characteristic color. The algae survive within small pockets of liquid water within the snow and ice, and have uniquely adapted to the cold, harsh environment at such high elevations. The intense coloration of these algae is one crucial adaptation that has allowed them to proliferate so quickly. It has a twofold function. First, the carotenoids that grant algae their orange and red color act as sunscreen, protecting the algae from damage by ultraviolet light. Second, by absorbing sunlight, the carotenoids are able to warm up the algae and surrounding water, creating a more habitable environment. Glacier blood has been observed throughout the colder regions of the world and is not a new phenomenon, having been reported thousands of years ago. However, the nature of why glacial snow turns red has not been understood until relatively recently. Theories had suggested that the unique coloration of the snow and ice could be due to dust in the air or on the ground that was picked up by the snow, or meteoric iron deposits, theories which were not entirely unfounded as similar phenomena were occasionally observed elsewhere in the world. These ideas, however, were cast into doubt by the mid-19th century when English and Scottish explorers attributed the phenomenon to living organisms in the snow, particularly algae or fungi. As methods such as microscopy became more widespread and higher quality, glacier blood was investigated more closely, helping to elucidate the role of algae in glacial snow coloration, as well as the myriad of glacial algae in general. When the algae responsible for glacier blood were first discovered, they were classified under the genus Chlamydomonas, a group of unicellular green algae abundant in water-rich environments throughout the world. These new algae were named Chlamydomonas nivalis, from the Latin word for snow-related. However, more extensive research on the genomics of glacial algae has indicated that they may be much more diverse than previously believed including qualities that differ based on the altitude at which the algae grow. Recently, Chlamydomonas nivellus has been categorized into two new species belonging to the genus Sanguina, derived from the Latin word for blood due to the algae's vivid coloration. The microalgae that cause the phenomenon of glacier blood are only a small subset of the many species of algae that survive and thrive within snow a group of organisms that themselves are not extensively studied. As rain and snow falls through the atmosphere, it picks up pollutants in the air, including nitrogen and sulfur-containing compounds and small particles. These are used by the algae as a source of food, 
alongside carbon dioxide from the air around them. Sediment, brought in by wind or flowing water from the nearby surroundings, can provide the algae with the necessary elements phosphorus and potassium, among others. Algae also interact with other living organisms in their environment, such as bacteria, which are able to make some nutrients more biologically available in return for sugars from the algae. Thus, when the algae break out of dormancy in the spring months following increasing heat and sunlight, they serve as a good indicator of ecosystem health and local pollution levels. Many of the regions seeing extreme blooms of glacial algae are those in the relative vicinity of areas with high industrial activity and pollution, including the Alps, the Sierra Nevada in California, and parts of eastern Siberia. However, glacial algae blooms are also seen in more remote areas such as the North and South Poles or the Greenland Ice Sheet. Forest fires are another phenomenon that strongly promotes glacial algae blooms. With the recent intense forest fires in California, the Sierra Nevada mountain range has seen tremendous incidences of glacier blood. While these microalgae, being photosynthetic organisms, are able to sequester atmospheric carbon dioxide and are a food source for other organisms on the food chain, their excessive proliferation leads to drastic and potentially negative environmental effects. Massive algal blooms can release toxic compounds which eventually end up in rivers, streams, and other waterways, poisoning animals that come into contact with the water sources. While the algae responsible for glacier blood may not be toxic, the phenomenon is often indicative of increased growth of potentially toxic algae. The coloration of glacier blood also decreases the ability of glaciers to reflect incoming solar radiation a property known as albedo. Intense algal blooms on glaciers can decrease the albedo by up to 13%, which accelerates glacial melting and triggers a snowball effect in the already fragile glacial environment. This can sometimes be seen in features dubbed sun cups, which are a result of algae accumulating in small spots that then experience more localized warming than the nearby snow and ice pack. The decreasing albedo combined with the longer and longer period during which the algae are active every year exacerbates the impact algae have on glacial ecosystems. Despite the regular occurrence of glacier blood in many regions of the world, investigations of the algae behind the phenomenon and their interactions with the surroundings are few and far in between, and many uncertainties still exist regarding algal blooms intensity and to what degree they affect the environment. This is in part due to the complex biological and abiotic factors that influence, and are also influenced by, microalgal blooms. Qualitative evidence suggests that glacier blood has been occurring more frequently and with higher intensity over the past few years but lack of standardized tracking as well as high variability in the year-to-year -year appearance of glacier blood makes it difficult to draw valid conclusions. From the limited analysis of glacial snowpack in areas with microalgal blooms, the intensity of algal blooms is correlated with the presence of pollutants, making it a potential indicator of air contamination. Many research teams around the world are investigating the algae that cause glacier blood, aiming to understand how these algae interact with their environment and how quickly they could spread to new habitats, something that would have immense repercussions on global ecosystems. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on the channel to keep learning more about biology, chemistry, physics, history, and many more topics.